Summit 2022 panel session, Microsoft Teams 2.0 Beyond Collaboration. My name is Patrick Watson. I'm a senior analyst with the Cavell Group, but I've got a couple of expert panel guests to talk about Microsoft Teams and our move through the worlds of uh, collaboration. Firstly, Mark Bunnell, Chief Operating Officer at New Wave. How are you, Mark? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you with us. And also Tom Arbuthnot, founder of Empowering Cloud. How's it going, Tom? Yeah, really good. Thanks. Yeah, good to be on. Thanks, Patrick. So in the title of this, we've got Microsoft Teams 2.0 Beyond Collaboration. But Tom, I wanted to come to you first, because when we were doing the planning for this, do you think we're even embracing the full capability of collaborative technologies like Microsoft Teams now? Before we even talk about moving beyond it, are we you know, fully utilising collaborative capabilities? Yeah, I don't think we are yet. The average organisation isn't anyway. I think the big, the big adoption through um, COVID was get some meetings platform, get some chat going because we need to communicate. We need our businesses to keep going. Uh, there's been an increasing push then to add telephony onto that platform because we've seen the platforms robust and stable and good. We want to add telephony on. Um, it, it's a relatively small proportion of users. And I've seen the reporting of various organizations that are truly embracing the Teams element of Teams, the work out loud, the files, the workflows, the app integration. So I still think we've got a way to go. If you split Teams into UC and collaboration, like as in text-based async, I think there's plenty to do to really embrace that new way of working still. And Mark, from the New Wave side, obviously you focused on that, that voice enablement piece that, that Tom was talking about. Is that something that you found that businesses maybe aren't, aren't quite aware or aren't embracing the full capability of the platform? Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, I, I believe that, uh, you know, you have, you know, hundreds of millions of active users on, on Teams, but maybe a single digit percentage of those users are actually using the voice enablement section of it. Um, I think that, uh, you know, through VR, the complexity of the turnups and the migrations and, you know, the, everybody having different types of networks, every company, every organization that you come into has a very different, you know, approach to voice in the network. And so, you know, there's pieces that have to be bolted on and, and put together to provide the full experience. And so I think that as time goes on and it becomes easier to turn up and, and automate um, and bring in other applications and things that make that full, you know, customer experience, uh, you know, through migration, it'll, it'll, you know, catch on and be quicker. I think with uh, Operator Connect uh, allowing for some easier turnups and things um, that it'll, it'll get more adoption. But I think we're just in the infancy of, of full collaboration using voice with Teams. Yeah, and, and, and both of you speak to a lot of enterprises who are probably trying to get that greater adoption across the different the different mediums. Uh, Tom, Tom, from your perspective, what what are businesses using now? Are they a lot of this just a lot of them just using Teams for IM and, and chat capabilities, I thought, and, and meeting capabilities. Yeah, meetings is definitely the big the big workload. Like like everybody uh, everybody has or had a meetings platform. So when you're moving, say you're moving from Skype or WebEx or any other AT and T connect, whatever it is, people understand the concept of, of online meetings so that's a relatively easy move and it was a very necessary move during covid so that's the primary thing keep people communicating synchronously have meetings lots of video um, chat comes fairly naturally lots of people already had chat in play everybody understands even if they haven't had chat they're like oh i get it it's it's iMessage, WhatsApp, SMS type chats. So, so chat groups, relatively easy to get high adoption on. As soon as you move into changing habits in work, so I used to email documents around and now I just put them in a team and we co-edit them, or um, workflows, you know, bringing things like ServiceNow, you know, your CRM system, your line of business apps into Teams, that's still relatively early. And actually there's a whole bunch of productivity benefits there still for organizations to, to gain because they're, they're just getting into this like new world of async working together teams you know work out loud culture yeah, and, you, and you talk there about the new world and and effectively a solution well collaborative solutions in compared to other technologies communication technologies we use still are pretty much in their infancy so and a lot of this was deployed i suppose during covid as sort of a quick fix to yeah enable. very very pushed out very very yeah. fast yeah it's quite quite a radical especially in large organizations you know tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands i've never seen projects so fast just we're going to do it you know governance security whatever it has to be done to keep the business going and now we're retrofitting that kind of governance security change management stuff mark is that something you've seen at new wave that this was 
uh, almost a reaction, uh, reactionary to the pandemic and businesses needed to get a platform that would help them. Uh, and do you think the types of deployments or the, or the numbers of deployments will change over the next couple of years as ho hopefully the pandemic subsides and we, we sort of truly embrace the hybrid world or, or the remote work world? Yeah, I think the paradigm has definitely shifted uh, to more of a you know, work from home, uh, you know, we definitely saw a lot of quick fix, you know, type of deals where people wanted to be up and running quickly. We did a lot of education where, you know, they said, oh, we're locking down. We're going to go into uh, teaching from teaching from home and how fast can we get up and operational? And, and so we saw a lot of that kind of panic uh, uh, integration things uh, going on. And so but I think now is it's kind of calmed down a little bit. And we understand that this is kind of the new norm, I guess. And and so it's not a quick fix, but. How do we then go from an on-premise phone system to a cloud phone system that allows us to deal with the next pandemic, the next issue, and have it be more permanent versus quick fix? And then having a control panel that enables you know, customer self-service, customer on demand, so that they can control when they turn it on and turn it off, or when they move and how they you know, uh, acquire services. I mean, we're living in an on-demand world, so you know those those telecommunication services for voice especially need to be on demand. It needs to be quick. It needs to be flexible and agile. But you still have to give customers the same level of visibility and control over that cloud phone system as if it was on prem. And so I think that moving forward, it's not so much reactionary; it's, it's future planning to make sure that they get you know that level of service and that level of control so that they can deal with the next variant or the next you know, pandemic or, or whatever might fuel the next need to have a, a hybrid work environment. Well, fingers crossed it's not some sort of horrible external catalyst that, that mm -hmm. creates even more demand for collaborative solutions. But so, Mark, one thing I'm interested in from that perspective, is there m more of an onus on an enterprise and, and also a provider like yourselves to uh, assist with the training and understanding of the platform? Is that something that you think is going to increase in the demand for those sort of services in terms of training are going to increase over the next couple of years? Definitely. I mean, we're, we're definitely seeing that now. I mean, if you provide customers with that rich experience, with the visibility and control, with the self-service, you have to stay and give them a learning system as well. Not only just help and, and KDs and those types of things, but an actual learning system that enables somebody to go in and, and take classes on demand, to have certifications, to be able to go through it, but also providing a, an interface that is user friendly, right? It, it's sort of like the Apple um, iPhone back in the day where you took all these complexities and you made it super simple that anyone could use it, that you um, did all the complex features, you know, and things that behind the scenes where customers don't really see how that works, but you know, it very becomes very simple, very, you know, user friendly where you can just point and click and, and do is so that the learning curve isn't so steep. You know, you don't want to have to have an engineering degree to be able to learn how to work your, your environment. And, and Tom, I know you spent a lot of your time in terms of that uh, sort of adoption utilization piece is that, that training is going to be absolutely key, isn't it, for businesses to really get good ROI from collaborative platforms like Teams? Yeah, definitely. And I think that the first thing for organizations to do is to look at the adoption stats because lots of people have rolled out teams and it's like you, know, you hear people saying, well, we, we've done it, quote unquote. It's like, well, yeah, it's not, I wouldn't say it's ever really done because people are coming and leaving the workforce, changing roles. There's always training and adoption to do, um, but it's not your classic, like give them a 90 minute, you know, webinar type experience. Like nobody's got time for that in 2022 it's all about kind of bite size when i need it and, and coaching if you can afford to do it it's been really really good in some organizations where you kind of have these uh, roaming experts who are either in business units in large organizations or across the entire business in, in smaller organizations that are just available when people can book you know 15 minutes in to ask their exact question and get their exact answer um, so i think uh, as mark says it's, it's new ways of training and supporting the organization to, to get them most out of these tools. Yeah, and that, that sort of tech evangelist piece within a team has been used for deploying technologies for a long time. You know, you have a particular expert within the team that might not be in the sort of technical staff, but that, that the business can go to with questions. I suppose the other thing that I sort of thought about when you were talking then is because it, it, it definitely doesn't ever end because the development of teams is so rapid. I mean, Microsoft are bringing out new features on such a frequent basis. Yeah, it was 300 really, features, I think it was last year, that got, like, got added through the year, just an insane amount of change and, and additions. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, that's hard enough for you to keep up with as someone that's sort of specialised in the space, but for a business, that is 
to make sure you're trying to, and anything that comes on that might be particularly useful for your business, you want to make sure your, your, your staff can utilize that and they know it's there. Definitely. So it's part of what you're paying for with the cloud. You're, you're buying into a subscription model where you're continuously getting new features, new benefits. So if you're not leveraging those on the kind of positive side, you're not getting your full ROI, but also on the slightly more negative side, you know, features change where, you know, the security model might change, the federation model might change, what people can do might change. So you want to be on top of it from a security governance and compliance point of view as well. And Mark, that's the same from the voice perspective, isn't it? Teams are constantly updating the capabilities of Microsoft Phone System, and you mentioned Operator Connect before. They're bringing on new programs to to make this voice integration into Teams even easier. It's a case of not only keeping up, but fully maximizing the benefit of those new services. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I mean, uh, we're releasing a new software release every week to keep up with those changes, uh, to keep integrating them into the uh, into our UI to make sure that you know, customers know how to use them, how to you know, be trained on them. So, and we have complete staff, uh, you know, not only from the dev side, but from the education side, from the, you know, support side. I mean, uh, it's, it's constantly having to be integrated with new features, new trainings, new uh, information all the time. And, and we don't see it stopping for the next few years. I mean, uh, we're, just like I said before, single digit type of percentages of people using voice on teams, and that's gonna be ramping. So everything needs to be done at scale from, from development to, to uh, learning and training. That, that's interesting. So you anticipate that the percentage of uh, Teams users that are voice enabled, that, that's going to increase over the, because I, I think our, our data at Cavell puts it, as, as you said, in single digits in terms of voice enablement. But you, you think that's going to increase uh, probably as, as Teams continues to increase, but the proportion of voice enabled users within Teams will, will uh, increase as well. I do. I mean, just because when when you're using it as a UC platform and you have chat and channels and you're using it as a single pane of glass to control your environment, you know, voice enablement, you know, becomes a huge part of that. Um, so we see that going exponential over time. I think that the, the main barrier to entry, you know, for further adoption has just simply been the complexities of, of the configuration that, that goes with all the different SVC types and, and uh, FQDNs and, and PowerShell and all those things that have been automated with us. You know, that that was the only barrier to, you know, I think more companies want to have Teams voice. I think it was just a little complex to, to get set up. But since that's been solved, you know, with us, then we see exponential growth happening globally uh, for for the adoption because people want to have that one single pane of glass and go to the cloud. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, we definitely see 2022 and beyond um, is, is all about, you know, enabling voice. Yeah, I, yeah. I, would, I would concur. There's no, there's no way it's not not going up. It's a debate about how much it goes up in 2022. You know, you can debate the percentage, but seeing lots of organizations are realizing like we already rely on teams now. We've essentially load tested it by running the entire organization on it for meetings. We're doing peer to peer calling. So why are we still knocking around these, you know, what is now kind of traditional IPPBX versus teams or disparate systems? And as Mark says, it's about approaching the project in the right way. What is interesting is very big orgs are approaching it much faster than they would have, you know, 24 months ago because they're essentially already bought into the platform. They're already using it. So quite right, as Mark says, it's about do we use direct routing? Do we use Operate Connect? Do we use calling plans? Do we mix and match those things? But from a platform decision, it's already been made. It's just how do we bring the other pieces together around the ecosystem? Yeah, I was just about to say, I, I think I'd agree with that as well. And it also goes back to that point we were talking about before. Effectively, so many businesses deployed Teams as quickly as possible just so that they had a remote meeting and chat solution. And as time goes on and they better understand the platform, it makes sense to integrate voice capability into the platform. So I, I would agree that with, we're going to see that increase pretty dramatically over the next couple of years. Uh, one one uh, area I wanted to t touch on as well is we're talking about whether uh, the majority of businesses even recognize or utilize the full capabilities of the platform now. Th those capabilities are going to expand further, aren't there? And we, we talk about employees, uh, employee engagement, Microsoft Viva, and I know, Tom, you can, you can touch on that, but also, Mark, in terms of uh, contact center integration as well, using direct routing or, or operator connect. T Tom, first of all, on, on, on Viva, you know, Teams is effectively adding those other areas of capability, which... I suppose don't necessarily come directly into collaboration, but are effectively those sort of supporting fears on a on a Venn diagram. Yeah, I mean Teams. So so you can frame Teams in lots of different ways, but as well as being 
you see in collab and meetings in the box it's it's really a platform and microsoft are pushing the platform bit really hard and so viva is a separate set of tools you know digital employee experience microsoft frame it has but but learning and time management kind of training support uh, but what microsoft is saying is that teams is the platform your users are already using let's integrate those experiences so they're really leveraging the the, the massive growth of teams to say now let's put digital employee experience into the same you know, single pane of glass overused phrase but the same experience the users are using every day and add those features in so it is uh, it's a separate use case or product but it's embedded into teams from a user experience point of view yeah someone at microsoft once mentioned to me teams being effectively like a ui a user interface window into the the wider microsoft suite. And, and mark on that other point in terms of you must be getting a lot of demand in terms of businesses wanting to enable voice capability so they can manage their their customer experience their, their contact center requirements as well yeah they um i mean it's it's all going to be about different integrations you know anything that, that touches voice is, is going to be key you know piece, piece together because it's you, know, you have the basic voice you have you know calling plans you know with us and everything but i think in the future here you're going to be looking at everything voice that's an integration of other companies um other services contact center is a great example call reporting um you know just just different applications and different you know pieces if you're tying you know other competitor you know companies uh you know together to make a, a holistic solution you know so if you're multinational and you have you know, teams here and some other service somewhere else, and but you want them to be able to communicate together. So those plugins, those integrations that come through, say the Microsoft App Store, you know, th those will those will be uh, happening a lot more frequently in the future. Um, and so you'll you'll get a really rich experience as as the applications that get integrated more and more over time. You know, that's that's kind of the ecosystem that I think that they're trying to build is is being able to not not just from an application standpoint like channels and chat and those types of things but also through ACS and others, you know, where you're starting to stitch in other applications that people come up with, with their specific industries in mind. So if it's, say, you know, healthcare or manufacturing or something like that, you know, starting to stitch in and plug in different applications that they have to, you know, truly bring in that single pane of glass. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's effectively, it's not like thinking of collaboration of a, as, as a set of functions, it's across multiple platforms and businesses are going to want to be able to enable collaboration across all those those different areas. So I think that's that's interesting uh, sort of philosophically. But before I let you both go, I wanted, if possible, to get, and I know you've been working, both of you, with, with a lot of businesses on this, some of your top tips for businesses to succeed with teams and, and collaboration, whether that's with adoption or education or training, whatever that might be. And, and Tom, I'll come to you first on that. Yeah, so, so the, the, if you if you force me to pick one, the one I always go to is like align the technology project to the business objectives and, and then communicate that because there's lots of change going on. Obviously, some of it forced as as reaction to worldwide events. But what really helps for for users and adoption is to give a vision of this is where we're going as a business. This is why we we want to be enabling working from anywhere. This is why we want you to collaborate more. This is why we're changing the way we work. We always find adoption is a lot better if there's a, a cause and a purpose and it's coming from kind of authoritative business figures rather than just technology saying, here's another tool, here's another tool, here's another tool. Um, so all about vision and business requirements and aligning the, the technology change to that. Yeah, I suppose it's that sort of principle of outcome based technology rather than just and, and I get I'm definitely guilty of it getting carried away with technology and something shiny and new for technology sake. Yeah, as technologists that, that we tend to do that, don't we? And we sort of we sort of yeah. assume everybody understands why. So it's like like collaboration, do this. Like, well why is that better? It's like, well, everybody's, you know, async now. Everybody's all around the world working together. We need to communicate better in an async way. That's why we're changing the way we behave, not just it's a new shiny way to work and everybody thinks it's cool. Yeah, that must be a big challenge for businesses because I can't even get 100% adoption at home from me and the, the missus for my connected home. So in a, in a business of thousands of people, Mark, what about you? What are your what are sort of the top tips that you and New Wave have, uh, have sort of learned about teams and collaboration as a whole? Yeah, I, I agree 100 percent with uh, with Tom. You know, so have your have your plan, do your migration, but then I'll stack onto that and say, you know, once that that integration or that migration is done and you've implemented your plan you know, take control back, you know, make sure that you have the tools, make sure that, that you have the visibility and control to deal with it versus relying on others, you know, to, 
you know, control your destiny, right? You shouldn't have to be, you know, putting in orders and things like that to, you know, make minor changes and those types of things. You should be able to have on demand if you, if you, uh, if you want it, you should have that level of visibility and control into the network through analytics and, and understanding the health and the, uh, of the network, right? Because this is cloud. So you can't go into your on-premise, you know, system and take a look. You have to, you know, look and see what's happening, not only with uh, Microsoft and Teams and their statistics, right? But you have to have carrier analytics and things to understand the health of the network because that, that cloud becomes your network. So you need to understand, you know, the level of, uh, uh, of um, statistics there, MOS scores, packet lock, jitter latency, those types of things. So, you know, I would say that after the migration is done, just make sure that you have the visibility and control over that system when it's there so that you can make moves and change uh, on a dime if something comes up. Yeah, that visibility point is absolutely key. And as we were talking about before, you know, adding more and more platforms makes that potentially more of a challenge. So that's something that businesses are going to have to really think about. That, that's all we've got time for um, for this session. So uh, thanks so much to my panellists, Mark Vanell from New Wave and, and Tom Arbuthnot uh, from Empowering Cloud. Uh, I hope you very much enjoy the rest of UC Summit 2022, but that's goodbye from us. Goodbye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, goodbye. Thanks. Thank you.